is a, a rehabilitation program. It helps people who are in recovery, and they just they do a great job. We're going to let them um, talk about it. So would you join me in welcoming Jeff? That's a novelty almost these days, like to have kids and moms and dads and aunties and uncles and grandparents worshiping together. So I just, I'm a big way to even now. Um, Life Challenge Ministries is a product of Teen Challenge. How many have heard that name before? Okay. Maybe the late David Wilkerson, the cross and the switchblade. Uh, we have over a thousand centers spread across 125 different countries. We happen to own and operate two here in the Detroit area, as well as up in Flint. As your pastor mentioned, we are a uh, residential recovery program that is faith-based, Jesus-centered. Can you say the J word here? Yeah. Yeah. That's not taboo or anathema here. We're Jesus-centered. We believe that there are many things that uh, feed addiction, but we believe that at the core of addiction, there is a spiritual matter that must be addressed. And that is addressed through Jesus Christ. And so our goal is to, to take men and women that could be your sons and daughters and brothers and aunts and uncles, to take them out of Dodge for a while, to get them away from the distractions that are out there, and to introduce, perhaps for the first time, or reintroduce them uh, to the person of Jesus Christ and help them experience uh, whole recovery. Andre, if you come at this time... Uh, as I said, we've got two campuses, Detroit and Flint. And between the two, we're uh, serving about 70 to 75 men and women. Here in Detroit, we are co-ed. Uh, our centers are about a half a mile apart, but we serve both men and women up in Flint, uh, just men. And uh, Andrea happens to be one of our ladies in the program. And the <coughs> final laps, so why don't you come on up here and share a little of your story? So, uh, my name is Andrea. I am 33 years old, um, and I've been on Life Challenge for more than my 12th month, so I graduate next month. Yay! Um, just a short testimony of mine. Um, I, uh, I'll start from the age of 13. So, I, I, I was raised in the Catholic Church, um, and I, it was only a tradition. It wasn't like it was a... You know, something that we really got into, we just did it because that's what our family did before. And, um, yeah, went to a Catholic school. I, uh, I started using drugs when I was 13. Um, smoking weed, just getting, in, getting into trouble. It started with my court system. Stuff, criminal history started at the age of 13. Uh, by the age of 18, I was doing opiates, painkillers, pills, um, anything that would just numb me inside. Uh, by the age of 20, between 20 and 23, I uh, became a full-blown heroin addict. Um, a really important part of my story is the fact that I had two amazing, beautiful little girls, and I was never a mother to them. I, I abandoned my kids. I, I left them for you know somebody else to take care of, and... I was selfish about it. I was broken. I was hopeless. You know, nothing. Nothing mattered. They didn't even matter to me. Um, I, I, yeah, that's pretty much that. But um, so th this last round, like I said, I've, I've been. I have a criminal history. Um, I was in jail, and um, you know, you, you burn bridges when when you're selfish like that, and you only think of yourself through through everything. You burn a lot of bridges, and. I, I was alone in jail again and in stripes, stinking like God knows what. And um, I, I kept making phone calls and phone calls and phone calls. There was, there was one friend that actually answered my phone calls. My parents wouldn't answer my phone calls. Nobody else would answer my phone calls. Um, she actually graduated this program before and completely turned her life around. And she had something that I wanted. Um, she, she told me that she could give me set up with Life Challenge, it was a year program, and at, at that time, my, I, I was like double-sided with everything. I, um, I wanted to go to get out of jail, but then I also needed something different in my life, so I ended up coming, and um, I, I completely changed around my life from where, where I started. 
I, I found Jesus. I found, you know, that spiritual thing that I was missing inside me because it wasn't me. You know, I, I couldn't do this on my own. It, and it's all because of Jesus that I'm able to do this. I'm delivered from this stuff. He, he's, my, he's my all in all. You know, without him, I have nothing. Without him, I am nothing. So um, Life Jam Challenge is an amazing program. And I thank you guys for allowing us to come here today. I'm super excited, as I know, like, the girls and the guys are, too. So I just I want to thank you guys for allowing us to come today. Amen. <laughs> Way. How many of you are presently in recovery? Raise your hand. Not my life challenge, folks, but how many are in recovery? Raise your hand. That's it. How many of you struggle with pride? Any of you struggle with anger once in a while? Impatience? Laziness? No one wants to. Okay. How many of you are presently in recovery? Raise your hands. <laughs> That's better. I know I set you up. You're drinking drugs and alcohol. Uh, the late Gerald May, psychiatrist, Christian psychiatrist, said to be alive is to be addicted. We all have our go-to addictions, uh, ways that we try to drown out some of the pain, try to enter into another state, another place. We are all addicted. You're looking, by the way, at a man who is 45 plus years in recovery from Phariseeism. <laughs> and a recovering moralist, recovering legalist. And uh, the good news, Pastor Joe, is God loves Pharisees. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. He loves tax collectors, he loves sinners, and he loves Pharisees. And I'm so grateful for his recovery. It's been a long journey for me with ups and downs and twists and turns. But there's a God who is uh, persistent and stubborn and stays with me. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, my friend here, Pat. Um, Pat, you've been in the program how long? I got in on October 15th, so about four months or so. <coughs> how old are you? I turn 35 tomorrow. And where are you from? Uh, I was last living in Ferndale, Oakland County, most of my adult life, on and off. So, um, what brought you here? Uh, what was going on? Uh, my life was a mess. Um, I mean, I was just making a lot of selfish choices, a lot of uh, self-destructive choices. Um, I mean, what immediately precipitated me coming in, um, I was living in a house that my mom and stepdad owned, um, and... Uh, they basically told me that I, I wasn't working, I wasn't making much money, um, I didn't have really any means to support myself, and they said, you can't stay here anymore. Um, so you can go to a program that's at least 90 days, or you can be homeless. Um, and really my first instinct was to choose homelessness. Um, I wasn't sure I was ready for recovery. Um, what, what, what? Not drugs, who are you fighting? Uh, crack, mostly. Um, I mean, it didn't start there, but it definitely got there, and uh, that was pretty much all-consuming. So, how did it all start, and how long ago? Uh, well, gambling was my first addiction. Um, it was, it owned me as much as any other drug has ever owned me. Um, and, I mean, I took my first drink when I was probably 13 or 14, um, and gambling became a problem when I went away to school. Um, had a traumatic event happen in my life and just sucked me in completely. Um, I wouldn't go to class, so gamble and sleep is basically what I would do. You know, no one grows up and says, I want to be a drug addict, an alcoholic. You know, Pat, he's got a degree from Oakland University, he's smart. Um, addiction is not a respect of persons, and you just get caught up in a web. And before you know it, uh, you're on the verge of homelessness at 35 years of age. So what's happened since you've been here the last four months? Um, a lot has happened. Um, Life Challenge has given me a space where I can um, listen for God's direction, for God's plan for my life, um, where I can begin to have some willingness to follow that. Um, it's given me it's given me an opportunity where I can 
one of the big problems that I had before I got here is that I couldn't see a future where I was going to enjoy life, where I was going to be able to live a life that I would want to live. And that was part of why I didn't want to go to another program, um, is, is that I couldn't see a way forward. And it's given me a chance where I, I can see a path now that I can follow, where it will be fulfilling, where it will be meaningful, where I can contribute to life, where I can follow God's plan for me. Um, and I couldn't see that before I got here. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my friends to join me up here on the stage and we're going to sing a song not for you but with you
Some of these men and women have been with us just a few weeks, others uh, several months. Uh, they do share one common denominator. They were bound. They were bound in the vicious web of addiction, and God uh, has saw fit to redeem them. And I appreciated what we declared this morning. We did not choose him. He chose us. Uh, he pulled us out of the fire. And uh, we are survivors by his grace. Uh, Maurice, quickly, um, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> what do you think about that saying? That's no truth to that. With God, anything is possible. Yeah. How old are you? A little bit over 60. Just a little bit over 60. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Jesus saves old guys to keep the same dog. By the way, we've got a tradition. Uh, Maurice greets me every day. Uh, how you doing, man? Blessed by the best, just like you and the rest. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> One more time. Blessed by the best, just like you and the rest. Oh, that's, right, man. that's all I need to get through. How, how many years uh, battling addiction, alcohol? Many, uh, many years, on and off. Uh, as long as I've been uh, sober, it was ten and a half years. Back in '92, I first went to rehab. Uh, I didn't really commit myself to uh, Christ. I lost my way. Been a long journey, as you said. Um, what brought you here this uh, this time? I was broken. Uh, on the verge of becoming homeless. Uh, you know, just feeling weak, you know, I lost hope, you know, I lost Christ, I lost my way. So I found out about life challenging and found me a new, new way of life. So uh, where you at? Well, I'm a believer in Christ once again. I'm spiritually fit. Uh, I'm getting stronger and stronger in the Word of God. Uh, God doesn't give up on you? Never will. He's always going to be with us. He likes you? He loves you. He's his son. Come on, man. <laughs> Love you.
Um, I don't even know where she heard about it or anything like that, but you know, I heard it was a year program. I was like, I'm not doing that. You know, that's uh, a year. I'd only ever done 30, 60, 90 day programs. So um, the idea of, uh, you know, that it was faith based and it was a year long was scary to me. Um, but I don't, don't regret it for a second. You know, I, uh, I have a relationship with Jesus Christ now. I have, um, I, don't have I, I always have that hole, but I feel it with God, with Jesus now, and, and, and His love, and I don't have to turn to anything else to fill it anymore, and I'm so grateful for this program for that. Um, I've had the opportunity to be coming on these rallies with Pastor Jeff and Sister Lori, and, and all these groups of guys here for about a year and a half now, and, um, you know, a big part of what supports this ministry is people like you that we, we see every Sunday when we go to different churches and, and, and share our testimonies, and um, one of the big programs we have is our Sponsor Life program. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with these types of programs, but for uh, $35 a month, um, you guys can sponsor a resident. Um, the money doesn't go directly to them, but it does go towards helping keep the lights on, keep, keep them fed. I mean, they're hungry all the time. Uh, so, um, yeah, and, uh, you know, when they come in the program, all we require um, is a $700 uh, induction fee. And it costs up to $1,000 per head per month just to keep the program running for them. Okay? And... You know, two thirds of the guys that come in don't even have the seven hundred dollars. Um, I know that I didn't um, when I came in, and um, your donations help just you know fund the program. So for thirty five dollars a month, um, you guys can sponsor a student. Um, one of these brochures here. I got these guys. They're going to kind of just go off to the side. If you're interested, just raise your hand, and they'll give you a brochure. Um, what you get when you sponsor somebody is you'll get a bio on them. If I do this all one handed here. Um, honestly, just a little bit of their testimony. Um, you have the opportunity to write them if you choose to. Um, they'll write back. Um, you know, a lot of these guys and girls don't have anybody left when they come in here. They've burned all their bridges, um, like Andrew was saying, and uh, it's just nice to get a letter. You know, even just say, you know, I'm praying for you. It's just really nice. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, if you guys want to get involved, you can sign up. Uh, you can fill out the brochure. You can see me or Sister Lori at the table on the way out. Um, we can help you there. Um, there are other several ways to give, too, up on the screen. We have a text-to-give option, you know, for mobile giving. Um, and then another thing is we're always looking for volunteers. Um, anybody who wants to volunteer their time, we need drivers. Um, a couple of our vans uh, were actually vandalized a couple weeks ago and, and rendered inoperable. So, you know, we're just always looking for help, um, you know, and we appreciate any help we can get. So if anybody wants to, you know, just discuss that with me, I'll be in the back at the table um, after the service. And that's that. Thank you. By the way, uh, speaking of volunteers, Dave Chattel, he has been a volunteer uh, with us for many, many years. Good to see you, my friend. And uh, Linda, who's up north hunting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know better than that. <clears throat> but, um, you know, our, our program is distinct in many ways, uh, and one of those. Um, is the year-long program. You know, we start with a 90-day program. You throw a year out to an addict, and uh, that's a deal-breaker. They can't even think beyond tomorrow. But many of you know um, the story of the children of Israel. You know, you can get out of Egypt overnight, but Egypt doesn't get out of you overnight. Mm -hmm. And it takes time. It takes time. Uh, I'd say a good three-quarters of the program is just unlearning. Unlearning. Uh, you know, different ways of being and patterns that have been so deeply ingrained. And uh, then learning. Learning many times for the first time what it means to uh, engage with this great God who loves us and to, to learn to depend on Him and, and walk with Him. Uh, I want to leave you with just a, a few thoughts. Uh, I've been doing this uh, in May. It'll be 31 consecutive years by the grace of God, uh, right out of seminary. Uh, I found a ministry that I never left. And uh, I'm one of those few guys, I love what he do. Uh, I shouldn't say one of those few guys who loves what he does, but who found what he loved right out of school. And God has been so gracious. But in my journey with addicts, and I grew up actually at a teen channel, so you put that together, it's been my whole life. Uh, I've learned a few things. None of this is um, rocket science or going to, you know, cause you to say, wow, but three things about addiction, three things about recovery, 
one thing about God. Let me just get it to you real quickly. Three things about addiction. First of all, addiction is no respecter of persons. You saw the faces up there. It doesn't matter your IQ, your EQ, your AQ, your HQ, your CQ. It doesn't matter how old you are, your race, your religious history. Addiction is no respecter of persons. And I'm sure that if I took a poll, almost all of you, if I asked how many of you know someone who's struggling with drugs and or alcohol, almost all of you would raise your hand, I'm sure. Someone in your social network, a friend, a family member, someone you work with, someone you know you go to school with, someone respect their persons. Second thing, addiction is complex. You know, maybe you get that here, you got a counselor here, but sometimes in the church we uh, oversimplify things. Well, just, you know, pray it out, cast it out. You know, I, I believe in the power of Jesus Christ. And at the core of addiction, I said, there's the spiritual matter that must be addressed. But there's biochemical things going on. There's neurological, psychological, systemic. How many agree with me? Amen. Addiction is complex. It's complex. And number three, addiction affects the whole family. Everybody suffers. I know a lot of attention is on the addict, but man, it affects the mom, it affects the dad, it affects the spouse, it it's the husband that's off and running, or vice versa, the, the wife. It, it affects the whole family. It's a family affair. Three things about recovery. Number one, recovery is a mysterious journey. Everyone's recovery is unique. It's not cookie cut. It's full of ups and downs, twists and turns. I hate to say this as the director of a program, but relapse is more the rule than the exception. There's lots of stuff. And, you know, many times God's priorities are different than ours. You know, someone comes in for recovery, get me off this chemical, and, you know, we got to deal with an anger issue that you've got. That's first priority. we got to deal with this anxiety that's driving this machine. Just get me off this bottle. Recovery is a mysterious journey. The second thing about recovery, it's everyone's need. It's not just the, the person in addiction. The whole family, everybody needs to find some place of recovery. I've, I've seen kids that get lost in the whole thing. Because the, the older brother or the middle brother, you know, I tease my sister. She's the middle child, okay? The infamous middle child. You know, they can take a lot of the time and energy, and kids, siblings can get lost. There's lots of pain, and everybody needs a measure of recovery. And the third thing about recovery, it's a team sport. You know, March Madness is right around the corner. How many hands does it take to put a basketball through a basket? The answer, it's ten. Ten hands. Recovery is a team sport. These guys couldn't do it alone. These gals could None of us can. We need a community of support getting in our grill, you know, encouraging us, sometimes rebuking us, listening to us, just loving us. This is a team thing. And finally, one thing I've learned about God, I've learned several, you know, in the midst of all of this addiction, recovery, God's in control. You got to keep that as your ballast in the midst of the storm. He's also a God who's on the move saving and redeeming. He really does. If I didn't believe that, I would have packed up long ago my favorite verse. Romans 1, 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God. To do what? To save all those who believe. I've learned that God is in the midst of the, the darkness, the pain, the thick of it. He's never absent. I've learned many things, but the one thing that stands out, God suffers. Amen. Addiction impacts him. He doesn't just wave his little wand, you know. He doesn't just sit back kind of objectively. He's a God who weeps. You remember the story, right, in John 11? Jesus is going to the graveside of Lazarus and he he said before to his disciples, I'm going to 
wake him up. Well, what do you mean? I'm going to raise him up. Notwithstanding, he, he enters the town, and what does he do? You know, your favorite verse, the first verse you memorized. John eleven thirty five. 35, he wept. That's our God, he weeps. That's part of his glory. He enters into our pain. So no matter where you are in the spectrum, whether you're fighting a specific addiction yourself or, you know, you're, you're with someone that you love, that man was just causing a lot of disruption, God knows your pain too. He's not indifferent to it. He enters into it and he weeps. And let that be of consolation and comfort to you. Today it is to me. God, God loves you. And as such, he, he feels. I love what the writer of Hebrews says, Hebrews 4, 15. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with us. Rather, we've got one who is tempted in all ways like us, yet without sin. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Now you understand. Proof of that, you put it on skin yourself 2,000 years ago. You entered into this madness. Why? Because of your strange love. You came to reconcile, to redeem, to heal our brokenness by entering into our brokenness. Thank you. Help us, God, in like manner to enter into the brokenness of others. Lord, to enter, Lord, as those that are compassionate, caring, as well as hopeful. Lord, bless Crossroads. Bless this community of faith and continue to use them as a light in the midst of a darkened world. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah.